Welcome to the Content Amplified Podcast, brought to you by Masset. Our goal is to help you get more from your marketing content. Each episode is a 10 to 15 minute interview with industry experts that share amazing insights to help you squeeze as much juice from your content as you possibly can. Here's today's interview. Welcome back to another episode of Content Amplified. Today, I'm joined by Kira. Kira, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, I'm excited for it. This is going to be a fun conversation, but your background is extremely relevant. Would love to catch up and just let the audience know who you are, Kira, what you love about marketing and content in general, get a little bit of your background. We'd love to get to know you for a couple seconds. Yeah, absolutely. My name's Kira. I'm a senior content marketing manager. Um, I've been in marketing for about four years now. Um, Before that, I actually got my start in newspaper journalism. So so we got in school, did that for about six years professionally, and then just kind of frankly hit a wall. Um, It's a a very challenging profession. Um, Hats off to to anybody who's doing it today. It's really difficult. Um, It's a, a grind and I think I saw a throw pillow once that said the pay is terrible, but at least everybody hates you. So, I mean, that's just <laughs> what that can be like sometimes. So I wanted to try something different and I knew I wanted to get into the tech space, um, but I wasn't sure how to make the transition. So I actually took a role as a BDR um, or a B2B SaaS company. Um, I did that for eight months where I learned a ton. One of those things being that um, sales is not for me. So I took those learnings um, from selling and combined it with my experience uh, storytelling from journalism and hopped into content marketing and have been loving it ever since. I love it. And I think that's the coolest story ever because I we have had a lot of guests that go from journalism to marketing, but I love the middle step of sales. I think that's super important. Um, I'm sure we'll touch on that a little bit later in the episode. But really today we are going to talk about your background. We're going to talk about how to take a journalistic approach to your content marketing. So first question, Kira, why is it different? Like what is, you know, a quote unquote journalistic approach and how is that different from maybe how we typically do content marketing in in businesses? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, And I think that depending on who you ask, you could get a lot of different answers to that question. I think for me personally, it's that sometimes as content marketers, and I'm not immune to this, we fall into this trap of thinking that we know our products and we know our audience, so therefore we know what to write. But the reality is that we are masters of our own domain. We know how to market and we know our product, but we don't necessarily understand from our prospects or customers' point of view what their pain points truly are. We might think we do, but we're not in their shoes. So to me, taking a journalistic approach is remembering that we don't know everything and going straight to the source for all of our information. So as a journalist, you could never write anything unless you had a source to back it up. Either somebody saying it who's on the record, you know, some data that you can refer to, some other report that you can link back to. Um, But in content marketing, because we're not held to that same standard, I think a lot of times we tend to just put things into the writing without really having something to back it up. So I think of it as going straight to the source, talking to the customers, your SMEs, um, other folks in the industry, and using that information to create a piece of content that is informative and that is really speaking to your ideal audience in their own language because you've interviewed them for that piece. I love it. I love it. So in your background of journalism to sales to marketing, how is that middle step, you know, the, the BDR role, which is really the cutting your teeth of the sales world. It's not easy. I have so much respect for any BDR, SDR that's out there that can, can do this well. But how does that influence your journalistic and content marketing approach? Does it make any differences in how you approach writing content and things of that nature? To be honest, I took the sales role because I didn't know how else to break into the industry. I didn't expect to like it. I hoped that I would, Um, but I just needed to do something new, and that was a way to get a foot in the door. I think what, in my respect, the number one thing I learned from that was just the whole like selling concept. I think I actually heard on a different episode of this podcast, somebody say, the sooner that marketers realize that they are in sales, 
the easier their career is going to go. And it's true. Like that our thing of our day, our job is to help sales close deals. So um, I think I understood how to talk to people, how to actively listen, how to tell stories, how to get the most important information to the reader as fast as possible. All of that good stuff before I left journalism. But I didn't fully understand how to sell. I didn't understand the concept of pain points and mapping to solutions and, um, you know, the concept of the funnel. And that's all really critical information to have as a marketer. If I'd studied marketing in school, I'm sure I would have been introduced to that a lot earlier. Um, But for anybody who's making the transition, I tell them all the time that that sales experience was like everything because it, it gave me the rails to take my journalism and writing skills and translate them into sales speak through well not sales speak into marketing speak i should say yeah i love that well and and honestly as a side note for anyone looking at their marketing careers more and more bdr and sdr groups are starting to report up to marketing and if you want to have a unique advantage or a unique resume to justify that switch potentially and and we're not going to debate whether or not that's the right thing to do here like that's that's a heated debate I'll let sales and marketing teams everywhere debate that out, but it happens. Like I I very much have seen it. I personally have managed SDR teams in my career and it's happening more. And I can't tell you how valuable it would be to have that experience firsthand in the sales org before ever managing that on the marketing side of things. So just a really cool, unique, you know, resume builder that can add a lot of value to what you're doing um, on the marketing side. I think it also like kind of helps you with the concept of like killing your darlings. Like sometimes we get so wrapped up in a marketing idea or campaign or initiative that we think is going to be so cool. And it's so frustrating when sales comes back and says, how is that going to help us? But sometimes you do have to kind of go back to the drawing board and say, does sales not understand this or do I not understand what sales needs? Yeah. Um, and I think when you have that sales background, it's a lot easier to take a step back and say, hmm, maybe I got too excited about this project. Maybe this isn't, you know, the right move for this quarter or for this audience. Um, so, yeah, I think being able to put yourself in the sales team's shoes helps a lot as well when it comes to maintaining that critical relationship between marketing and sales. And it's cool. This kind of ties into this next point. You have this phrase that you often heard that you told me about, uh, think like a reader. Like you, you heard this all the time in journalism and it's interesting in marketing that we have multiple audiences. Sometimes our audience is internal. Maybe it's the sales team and sometimes it's directly to the prospect. Sometimes it's to the prospect through the sales team or things like that. But when you look at this, think like a reader. What does that like logistically look like? I know a lot of times we'll, you know, use the analogy of put their shoes on just like you did, but how, how do you actually think like a reader in a productive way to change the quality of your content? That is a great question. Thank you for asking that. I feel like so often we talk in generalizations and not tactical. Um, The tactical is obviously where the good stuff is. So um, I tend to think of it as, essentially answering the so what or the why should I care. I'll start with journalism because I think it helps make the point. But in journalism, like I might want to write about a new building project that's going before the planning board. And most people might say, what do I care? Like that doesn't impact me. But, you know, it might impact taxes in one way. It could impact zoning for a completely different part of the town in a different way. It could change where retail businesses are going or how many liquor licenses are available. Like there's a lot of ways that it can impact a person, even if it's not on their block. And so when we were in journalism, it was a lot about figuring out how to make our readers care. Like why does this impact their lives and why should, why does it matter to them? And I think of content marketing the same way where maybe you know that your ideal audience has a very specific pain point and your product solves that pain point flawlessly. But you still have to get them to care by pointing out the implications of that pain point, right? So pain for a prospect can mean so many different things. It could mean something that actually makes their day-to-day really difficult, or it could be something that they don't even recognize as a pain point per se because they don't know it's possible to solve it. So a lot of times it comes down to kind of mapping to, all right, by solving this pain point, we're going to, you know, provide these solutions or 
this process is going to be able to do their job better in X way, or they're going to be able to realize Y benefit. And I think pulling those things to the surface and focusing very hard on them and how solving that pain point that they may or may not perceive could actually fundamentally change the way they do their jobs. That is what sells the product. And that is what answers this. So what? If you just say, we're going to help you do X, Y, or Z 10 times faster, that might care. They might not. Um, and I think it's all about just making them saying something that helps them to apply the solution you're offering to them in their actual lives to really understand the benefit they're offering. I'm a big fan of what you just talked about. The so what? Why does the reader care? I think that's super insightful. That's something that I'm going to have to think a lot about. I love that. So one final question. These podcast episodes go by quick. And our goal is to, to help marketers really everywhere learn and grow, but not have to waste your whole day and a whole podcast. But uh, when you're looking at journalism, often we think about journalism as cutting edge, brand new, just breaking news stories as opposed to more evergreen content that's more relevant all the time. Mm-hmm. How do you take this approach and, first of all, find these cutting-edge, news cycle-worthy articles, especially like in B2B where things maybe aren't as fast-moving as tra- you know traditional media, things like that? And then how can you also take this and apply it to the evergreen content side of things to help people really understand and care, even when it's not really like breaking news? I'll start with the breaking news piece. And I think that's the more difficult one. So we'll get that one out of the way first. Um, But the reality is even in an industry that feels very staid or like there's not a lot going on, there's always something that you can, we used to call it localizing in journalism where we took a national story and applied it to the small town we were covering. Um, There's always a way you can localize some kind of big impact to your audience. So if you're working in, a regulated industry, it might be a new piece of federal legislation that's going to change the way they have to think about compliance. Um, you know, if you're in a less regulated industry, maybe it's something about, maybe you, you sell marketing software and you want to talk about the changes to Google's algorithm and how, you know, everybody's screaming that SEO is dying. There's always something that you can tie back to your audience and kind of piggyback on the bigger story um, to tell your own. That would be my advice for the timeliness one. As for the evergreen pieces, um, that's where I would say it's helpful to think of it less like a breaking news story and more like um, a feature article. One of those soft news stories that you're going to read in like the Sunday paper, right? Where you can just go a little bit deeper with a topic that you've already spoken about. You know, every new piece doesn't have to address something completely radical. It could be something you talked about five times before, but this time you're going to take a little bit of a different angle or go a little bit deeper or add a little bit of nuance to it. Um, and there's always a way to change your angle or your approach just slightly to make a piece of content feel entirely new. I love that. That's super good advice. Well, Kira, thank you for this. I love it. I think it's definitely a new way that marketers should think about their content, focus on the so what, focus on how to be a journal or a, a journalist in the process. And then really like think like the reader. I think that's such a cool quote. And I love that frame of lens when you're writing content. So powerful. Kira, if anyone wants to continue the conversation online, reach out and connect with you, how can they find you? Sure. Uh, You can find me on LinkedIn. It's, um, I think my handle is KBlessing. First name K-I-E-R-A, last name Blessing with a B. Um, And I'm pretty responsive on there. So that's the best place to find me. Love it. Well, again, thanks for your time today. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much. This was a lot of fun. I appreciate you having me on. Thank you for listening to the Content Amplified podcast. Please subscribe and leave us a review. And for additional ways to get more out of your content, visit our website at getmasset.com. That's getmasset.com. And tune in next time to the Content Amplified podcast.